Hi, my name is Michael Kornfeld. I am the corresponding author for a new paper that has been published in clinical ophthalmology entitled, A New Device to Non-Invasively Estimate the Intraocular Pressure Produced During Ocular Compression. My collaborator, David Duker, and I invented a device that is designed to be placed between uh, an object that applies pressure to the eye, to the closed eye, uh, during the period of ocular compression for which there is no other tonometer or device to make such measurements. Things like uh, when you sleep on your eye or is a period of risk during the digital ocular maneuver that's used after trabeculectomy surgery is a period of risk. Uh, rubbing your eye is a period of risk. There's plenty of times when people are compressing their eye and although we know the eye pressure becomes high when that occurs, we don't have a very good way of estimating the intraocular pressure. And of course, all methods of, of, of measuring the intraocular pressure actually estimate the intraocular pressure except for manometric measurements of the intraocular pressure when a cannula is placed into the eye and it is calibrated with a pressure transducer which is exactly how we tested our device. We, can, we calibrated a, uh, a tonometer uh, measurement uh, pressure transducer that was connected to a water column at different heights, and then we used that as a means of comparing the output from our device, which is a small bladder filled with water that is continuous with a line to the pressure transducer, that was one line, and the other line that was used as the comparison was a needle placed either into the vitreous cavity of a human cadaver eye, which was cannulated along the length of the optic nerve, or in a in vivo pig experiment, we used a needle that was modified that had a slot cut in the side of it and the sharp end sealed with super glue so we could actually measure a fluid continuum in the anterior chamber of the pig eye. And when we did this, simultaneous measurements of external compression of the, either the pig eye or the human eye, there was a simultaneous tracing made on the chart recorder that showed how the two tracked together and within a range of uh, between 10 and 100 millimeters of mercury, the two were within 5% of each other in a dynamic sort of way. And there was a delay in the two systems, so they don't superimpose time-wise, but the, the tracings are almost mirror images of one another. And as far as the pig experiment, you could actually see during compression little oscillations, which were the, um, the pressure produced by the perfusion into the eye. And our systems were sound in the sense that when the compression was eliminated from the system, the eye pressure in the resting state returned to its baseline, indicating that cannulating the eye did not produce a leak. So we believe that this device, which we call the ocular pressure estimator, is a valid way of estimating the intraocular pressure transients that rise during external compression that are useful for measuring lots of clinical situations where there is not a way of measuring it, and that comparing these to cannulated eyes, either a human cadaver eye in the vitreous or in the anterior chamber of a live pig, is a, uh, a validating way of assuring researchers who might consider this technology for these other clinical applications to believe that the technology is sound. Thank you very much.